So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about three pieces of gear that I used in 2022 that were really helpful and made my whole YouTube and filmmaking life a lot easier. But before we get into that, what's up? Hope you had a great holiday season and a great New Year's. It's crazy that we're already halfway through January of 2023. So yeah, I have some pretty big goals here in 2023. Last year, I feel like it was all about trying to hone my skills as a filmmaker and cinematographer. This year, I definitely wanna focus a little bit more on creating more work and doing some more freelance projects. So that's something that I'm pretty stoked about. But now let's get into some of the gear that I used in 2022 that has really helped me create these YouTube videos. So the first piece of gear is something that is typically not a super fun subject to talk about because no matter which one you buy, they all basically do the same thing, and that is a tripod. Now, this one is a small rig tripod, and they actually were nice enough to send this out to me. Thank you, small rig. But yeah, I've been using this tripod over the last few months, and I've really, really liked it. There are some things that might deter you from this style of tripod at the beginning, but honestly, I feel like the pros definitely outweigh the cons. So some of the pros about this tripod is that it is a carbon fiber tripod. So it's super light and I can just strap it to the back of my backpack and carry it around and it really doesn't weigh that much. Second thing that I really like about this tripod is that this model comes with a ball head. Obviously you can switch it out for a video head if you want, but having a ball head like this is actually really good if you're a YouTuber because most of the time you don't really want to be fiddling with the legs of a tripod to get it level. You can just use the ball head on top to get it level, which I think is a lot more convenient when you're doing YouTube videos where the camera isn't moving. This ball head is pretty cool because you can obviously tighten down the ball head, but the pan axis can actually be loosened and you can still do really nice smooth pans with this ball head. The legs of this tripod are flip lock legs, which I always prefer. I don't really like the screw lock ones. Those ones just take a little bit too much time in my opinion. One of these legs can actually be unscrewed and used as a monopod, which is pretty cool. Now, obviously you could use this as a monopod like it's intended, but if you're in a pinch, you could put a shock mount on this thing and use it as a boom pole if you really needed one. So that's another pretty cool little usage of this detachable leg on this tripod. Now, something that you may notice about this particular tripod is that there is no telescoping middle section, which if you've ever used a professional video tripod, most of the professional video tripods don't have the telescoping middle section. And that's because if you really wanna get a low, low angle shot, it's really hard to get your camera super low. But with this style of a tripod, you can get it almost directly on the ground, but still have a nice stable base. So if you need to get a really low angle shot, having a tripod like this is gonna be a lot easier to achieve it. So as I said, 2022 was a big year of learning for me, learning new techniques, learning how I really wanna run my YouTube channel. And speaking of learning, that does bring me to the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people with thousands of inspiring classes. If you're trying to gain a new skill that could create more career possibilities, Skillshare has classes that will help make your creative ambitions a full-time job. One of my favorite classes is Building a Filmmaking Career, How to Find Success as a Video Creator by Simon Cade. This class covers everything from how to start getting paid as a filmmaker, what equipment to buy, and how to avoid client disasters. What's really cool is that the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below are gonna get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can check out all those different classes for free for a month. So I highly encourage you to go down in the description below and click that link and be one of those first 1,000 people. Once again, big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so next up is a piece of gear that a company sent me like this time last year and either they're the chillest company ever or they kind of just forgot about it. I'm gonna go with the former. I think that they're just probably pretty chill and they didn't want to rush me, but it's actually Brevity and they sent me their jumper backpack. So I've actually seen this backpack being used by people like Grainy Days or Danny Gewurz and this is actually a really solid little backpack. There are some things that I don't like about it and I will share some of the pros and cons, but basically this is like a content creator's day pack. This can carry all of your camera gear plus a little bit extra up on top. It's got a water bottle slash Joby Gorilla Pod or small tripod holder and it's got some straps on the bottom that you can also strap some tripods to, which is what I use them for. And then 
then there's even a little stash pocket behind here for your passports, your business cards, all that kind of stuff. So this is a great little backpack and I think that this is perfect if you're walking around in the city, maybe going on a really short day trip. This is definitely not what I would call like a hiking day pack, mostly because there's no sternum straps, there's no waist strap or anything like that. So this kind of reminds me of like maybe like a Jansport backpack, just a really basic backpack, but it's designed for content creators. So this main pouch here has a bunch of padded dividers that you can put all your gear in, which is really nice. Then there's an extra little spot right here that you can put all like filters, extra gear that you need. And then up here, you can stash like a rain jacket, maybe some headphones, a couple extra pieces of gear. And there's actually a laptop sleeve on the very back, which I've actually been able to fit my 16 inch MacBook Pro in, which is pretty sweet. Now, even though I do love this brevity jumper, there are some things that I don't like about it so much. And I, again, I've been using this for a year. One of the things that I don't like, and I think it's just maybe like a personal preference for me, is just the way that the camera compartment is designed. There is a side pouch here that you can get your camera out. So you can kind of just like sling it around to you and get your camera out that way. But I've always been really partial to the hatchback design to where you can get to all your gear from the back of your backpack. And the reason being is because when I'm out on a trail or I'm hiking or I'm just in a really dirty place, in order to get to my camera gear with this backpack, I have to lay it down this way. And what that means is that if the ground is really dirty, I put that back on my back and it just gets my whole back all dirty with whatever was on the ground. So that's something that's pretty annoying. And if Brevity was going to do a revamped version of this, I would say, consider making it a hatchback design because then you can put your backpack down, face down, get to all your gear, and then put your bag back on and your clothes are gonna stay clean. Other than that, this is great. It's really sleek. It doesn't look like a camera backpack, which I really like. And it holds basically everything that I need for just going out and shooting a YouTube video. Am I gonna go onto a big production where I need several cameras, a bunch of different lenses, and a big lighting kit? Obviously, I'm only gonna put like very bare essential stuff in there. I'm still gonna need my Pelicans and stuff like that. But for just a really basic day YouTube shoot or just like a photo shoot or something like that, this backpack is great. Thank you Brevity for sending this out to me and sorry it's taken me so long to talk about it, but I'm glad that I've been able to use it for a full year and I can definitely give this one a thumbs up. So the last piece of gear on this list is something that I've been using for a while now and I really, really like. If you remember in this video, I was really wishing that Small Rig would continue to make their half cage for the Olympus EM1 Mark II and Mark III, which the Mark II is what I use. And they actually have made a new cage. It's for the new OM1, but what's kind of nice is that it also fits on the Olympus EM1 Mark II and the Mark III. So yeah, this is the kind of new Small Rig half cage for the Olympus OM1. So so essentially, if you have any of these cameras, this cage will fit on it. And I really like that they kind of refined the design. The metal on the far right of the cage where your fingers are gonna go into the actual grip feels a lot more form-fitting to the camera, which I really like. And everything just kind of fits a little bit more snug and there's not as many like harsh edges to this cage. Something that I also like that they included with this cage is there's a little tool right here that you can take out and use to tighten or loosen any of the tripod mounts or any of the other accessories that you have on your cage. Something that's also pretty cool about this cage is that there's actually a dedicated cold shoe on the left-hand side of the cage, which typically I usually like to have my mics on the right-hand side of my cage, but I've been getting used to putting my mic on this side. It's actually closer to the mic jack anyway, so I really like that. And honestly, this cage just looks and feels like it's part of the camera. And I feel like if you're a hybrid shooter, having a half cage is something that I just think makes so much more sense. I feel like more companies need to make half cages because there's so many hybrid shooters out there and a lot of us don't really want to have a big piece of metal on the right hand side of our camera. The right hand side of our camera where the grip is typically is a pretty good grip on most cameras. We don't need a big piece of metal on there. That's why I really like the half cage design. One last thing that I really like about this cage is that it actually has a NATO rail on the left hand side. So theoretically, if I wanted to put a NATO handle on the left hand side of this cage, I could do some vertical shooting or something like that, which I don't know if I would ever shoot like this, but if you wanted to, you could. Obviously you could put a traditional side handle. The only thing that I don't necessarily like about this cage is 
that there isn't an integrated NATO rail on the top. That's something that I really liked about the G85 cage by Small Rig is that there was a integrated NATO rail. And to me, it just kind of feels like this cage and the handle and the mic is all just part of the camera. It's not like an accessory that's like obviously intruding on the camera's form factor. It just makes my EM1 Mark II feel more like a hybrid video slash photo camera. So I talked about a lot of gear in 2022, but I feel like these three things are pieces of gear that I actually use on a regular basis. I'll always be using different microphones and different lenses and different gimbals and sliders. But when it comes down to just like the core things that I use for my YouTube channel and making my videos, my tripod, the cage on my camera, and my backpack are just three things that are just staples. And I use them literally every single time I make a video. Anyways, if you'd like to check out some other videos about gear that I've done, you can click on either side of me and never forget to always go. Oh,